Hello everybody, welcome to Live Scribbles with Jonathan. You can check out my website and my work at jonathanrector.com. And if you guys wanted to find me anywhere on the internet, so you can go over there as well. Click at the top, there's a con or find me online button. Um, and there's a whole bunch of places you guys can look on there. I actually um, started going back on a Tumblr. I, I, I've i left that a little while, for, for a little while anyway. And it was just like another site to go to to keep scrolling, that infinite scroll. You know what I mean? And it's just, <laughs> it's, it's fine, but it's it can be dangerous. However, I've noticed, or I've been trying to notice as well, looking for people that are posting like web comics on there and how they're going about doing that. And, I, and apparently, I thought it was just absolutely cool. But you can like have a hashtag while you're posting your images. And then if everything's got the same hashtag, you can have like a URL that's got like that search, that hashtag in it. So it can go back to like your original mini or your comics and all that stuff. But, you know, that's cool. So anyway, I, I just want to say uh, Tumblr is cool. If you guys are on there too, you can follow me there. Um, I have a little list here, a little cheat sheet of things to talk about before we get going. So let's see where we're at here. Um, oh, okay, yeah, obviously, you know, we're going to go into this right at the beginning because I wanted to say thank you. Um, so I want to say thank you to all of my new Patreons. I've uh, actually got a little influx of new people this month. So thank you so much, and thank you for everybody that's still a Patreon from last month. And if uh, there are a few of you that have left, which is, which is fine, thank you for the support that you did give me. I really appreciate it. One thing I just wanted to point out here uh, really quickly because some people, they're not quite sure what's going on. Uh, and for good reason, I haven't really made a video talking about it. But if you go here, this is basically um, what you can pledge if you wanted something like this done a month. So if you wanted to say thanks, um, you can do an art critique, which we will actually talk about here as well. And uh, this one is the video uh, Google Hangout that you and I uh, can do as well. But it says right here, pledge a dollar or more per month, uh, and you know you get the free pencils and all that stuff. But you don't have to pledge a, a dollar. You can actually go in here and change it to if you really wanted to get real hokey to like a cent. <laughs> you know, if you just want those free brushes, go ahead. I mean, you know, do what you want to do. But uh, I, you know, any monetary support obviously is great. So thank you, thank you for that. But one thing I wanted to say, what I'm going to be doing is there's a new series that I talked about last week, and what it's going to be is a basically how to make a three page mini comic and for those of you that were here last week or watched the last week's recording on YouTube I talked about you know I, th I still feel like a lot of people look at mini comics and they just kind of like vomit in their mouth a bit that's not comics that's not I want to do comics you know I want to do trade I want to do trade paperbacks stories and stuff right but mini comics are a powerful tool that don't necessarily have to be mini in size mini uh, I mean in physical size. Mini can be, in this case, like a three-page story. So the idea is, on YouTube, I won't delve too much in this because this is going to be something that's happening, uh, but it's going to be going right from script to thumbnail, or script, to character design, to thumbnailing, to penciling, possibly inking, I'm not sure, possibly coloring, not sure, lettering for sure, and then what to do afterwards. And all that's going to be free. It's going to be a little series that I'm going to put on, on uh, YouTube as well. But... I figured just to incentivize my Patreon a little bit, what I will be doing is those videos will be going live on Patreon uh, for an entire month before I release them onto YouTube, okay? So I'll let you guys know so you don't have to like start going in and out. This is something that interests you. Interest you. Uh, so for a dollar, you'll be able to get that series uh, for free before it goes on YouTube just to see if you guys dig it. Okay, so you guys can check that out. Uh, like I say, that'll be coming soon-ish. Uh, it is what I'm mostly working on right now in the background from time to time uh, for YouTube. Now, speaking about YouTube, I just wanted to go over uh, the weekly schedule so you guys can understand what's going on uh, with the channel. I will be making a video for this, just going over it uh, so it's clear, so everybody kind of understands because there's going to be a lot of dates and information I'm throwing at you right now. So what I want to do is uh, I want to get more content out to you guys. So I've, I've made a little schedule for myself for an update schedule so you guys can sort of expect this sort of thing okay so every Monday we're gonna have a, a basic narration style video which has been if you look on my channel over the last months anyway it's usually I'll be working on like let's say this I'll just be inking and I'll do a speed lapse or a time lapse kind of thing and I'll just talk over it talk about what's going on what's new uh, updates of just stuff that's going on and what I'm doing on the page like I might talk about the rendering or or stuff like that that I've normally been, normally been doing um, and you know stuff like that so that'll be every Monday every Wednesday of course is like right now what's happening is a live stream 
And then Thursday, uh, that's where we get into kind of going back to the roots of the video, or of the channel, I should say, where we're going into the tutorials, the instructional. This, like, and I'm, I'm talking simple things here. I want to do very short, concise videos talking about fundamentals and basics. It's not necessarily anything... Uh, I think pros are going to get. It's not intended for that. Intermediate, maybe you might get something there. Uh, but it's mostly for the beginners. You know, the, the intro stuff that I think a lot of people really dig. And there are little fundamental things we can throw from time to time. Uh, and, you know, other things like that. I'll also be doing some book and art book recommendations and, like, art tool recommendations. Uh, plugins, brushes, stuff like that you guys might like. So that's basically that. And then on the weekend, that's when we're going to upload the live stream that we're having tonight on YouTube. So if you can't make it on Wednesdays, that's cool. We're going to be uploading the recorded version on the weekend. Now, the very last thing before we start doing some doodling tonight, my friends. <laughs> okay, so the critique thing that I told you guys about last week that I had prepared, I, I kept trying to figure out a schedule that I could get it done. And unfortunately, the only thing that I'll be able to squeeze it in so that it's not an entire show is during the live streams, for the last about 15 minutes, possibly 20 minutes, that's when I'll be taking critiques from everybody in the chat, okay? So I'll let you guys know when to start getting ready to start spamming. And I'm just going to randomly pick one or two, and then we're just going to do an art critique, okay? And a very simple, simple one. Now, if you want one that's a little bit more robust, something that you, know, you can probably sink your teeth into a little bit, uh, again, and you guys are going to hear me say this quite a bit because it's the only thing I got, head on over to Patreon. And we can schedule it in and get you like an in-depth crunchy one uh, so you don't, you don't have to wait. Um, and it just makes it easier for me because that way I can take um, time away from other projects because there's there's some dollars attached to it, right? You know, it's the way the world goes. I don't mean to be cheesy or skeezy. I hope you guys understand. And, um, and that's all that. So, how's everybody going? How's everybody doing? This week, what we're going to do is this cover here. Um, we've been doing some inking. And I'm actually going to jump into Photoshop right now and probably start some colors because I don't think you guys want to see me doing this stuff down here, this perspective stuff. It's a grid with some city and some rectangles. I got to go in here and draw building windows and stuff. It's not fun. It's probably not very fun <laughs> to watch to see me put rectangles and stuff in there. Um, so we're going to be jumping into uh, Photoshop. Even though this bottom part's not inked, it doesn't need to be because I can still color a general color over there and then on my own time I can just come in here and ink the lines that need to be in there and then just plop them into Photoshop it's you know it's a beautiful thing about digital you can jump around from stage as long as you get the meat and the potatoes down there as well okay so that's what we're gonna be doing I'm gonna be saving this right now and jumping into Photoshop now if you guys did have a comment or a question or something you needed some help with or whatever by all means ask it in the chat in all capitals that way I can see it and I can answer it for you so let's just save here and I'm gonna go back just to make sure I didn't miss anything in the chat. It's raining, man. Hey, man. Ah, good song. Uh, no, I will not be using the... Actually... So, Unsung, I'm going to say that's your name, I'm probably butchering it. Uh, he's asking, he or she, is asking if I'm going to use the the template in Photoshop and if you guys remember what that is is basically I have a bunch of paths that are already buildings and I would just line it up to like let's say this space right here and then stroke the path and it would just make the lines for me uh, actually I might do that the only problem is the lines like I'm not using a real ruler for any of this right so there's a lot of gaps and things but it will save me time and I actually forgot about that so um, you might be my unsung hero for tonight <laughs> But tonight, we won't be doing that. Uh, tonight, we're just going to do some good old-fashioned colors. Uh, Ian's asked if I've watched a video. Um, which video was that, Ian? <laughs> I'm sure you... That's like your tenth time of... Uh, <sighs> posting in here. Jonathan, are you excited about the Power Ranger reboot movie? Uh, I, If it's like Mighty Morphin Power Rangers? Sure. I, I guess it depends who's in it. Uh, for me, um, Power Rangers is very nostalgic. So I need, like, some of the original characters, if not all of them. I don't want to see new people for that. Although, you know, once you're in the costume, it's kind of... It doesn't really matter. Um, but I haven't really seen anything from it. Is there any, like, images or video or anything like that? All right, sounds like uh, Maddie in the chat has got some love for the mini-comics, which is great. Uh, 
Uh, okay, so it sounds like I may not have been too clear. So let me just say one more time for the critiques. Uh, I will be saying this for a while so you guys get used to it. Uh, critiques will be every live stream for like the last 15 to 20 minutes. I'll let everybody know ahead of time. Uh, like when we get close, so you guys can start just spamming the chat, which I'm sure most of you will. If you want a critique, and I can do that live. If you want a private, better, more concise critique, uh, then head on over to my Patreon website and you can schedule one in there. Um, that way there's actually a point to it on there. <laughs> okay, so da, 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 what are we opening here? Um, not Google Drive, this one. Oh yes, I, I did watch that one. Yes. It was actually a very good video. And I had actually seen that. I don't know if it was you that originally sent it to me before, but yes, I was watching it and I rewatched it and I I did see it. I have seen it. Yes. Yeah, we are. See, that's what happens. We're gonna keep talking about the same videos until I start uh, start watching them. It's my own fault. Color theory is it's. Uh, I'm getting a better handle on it. Uh, let's just change this background to black. I'm getting a better handle on it, but it's still a beast. It's still, I'm still locked in certain ways, you know, like, I like doing things a certain way. Um, and it's hard to break out of that, even though they're the wrong way. Well, it's art, right? So there's things that are right, and there's things that are wrong. There's fundamentals that are usually right. But um, I forget where I heard this, but it's, I think it's correct to a certain degree where it's, um, Rules are there, that's great, you know? But if everybody followed the same rules, you'd just be getting the same stuff. You'd just be getting like, okay, well, within this, this rule set, you can you expand things. But you get people that don't study anatomy at all, and they're getting crazy artwork. And it doesn't look like they studied anatomy at all, but it looks cool, right? So you got to kind of pick your battles sometimes. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, Lars is asking, Jonathan, uh, for time, sorry, from time to time, you will say something like, "I sure, I assume we are all artists here. We can. When can you call yourself an artist?" Oh, okay. So you're, you're okay. Um, I think everybody's an artist, and I know that probably sounds mom and poppy, like your mom or dad might say that to you or something like that. But uh, if you're creating anything. Uh, now we're kind of getting sketchy, but I, I don't know. If you're creating stuff that makes people think, or, whoops, 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 whoops. That makes people think, or makes people feel an emotion, I think you're an artist. The reason why I was just getting a little hesitant, because, like, you could probably start getting pretty sad with that stuff, like, oh, well, like, a mass murderer is an artist. <laughs> He makes people think. He makes people feel. You know? But I, I don't know. Like, if we're talking about, like, drawing kind of thing, when can you call yourself an artist? <coughs> Excuse me. If you're creating art, you're an artist. Right? Let's just be simple as that. I don't think there's any kind of prestige ness necessarily that comes with calling yourself an artist. <coughs> Excuse me. Drink some water. Um, I have known a few people. Oh, is Photoshop doing this right now? Let's see. Uh, it does this all the time. You open Photoshop up sometimes, and the pressure sensitivity doesn't work. So we just gotta restart it here. Um, but I have known some people that. They take art very seriously to the point where it's uh, they can start critiquing people that don't really look at art, you know, and they'll, they'll start saying, I don't say nasty things, but I'll use a stereotypical people that go to art galleries uh, that wear the nice fine suits, the puffy collars and the wine and they're eating the cheese and they just dissect a painting. But when you have an opinion about that painting, theirs is right. Or it's just like they've got like a, oh, you're a scumbag. Like, your opinion sucks, you know? And I think that's really going into something else. That's not really your question. 
Um, but keep it simple, I guess. If you're making art, you're an artist. I don't like to romanticize about that stuff too much. Like, I don't really... There's not really a pride thing that goes into it for me, myself. I know some people, it's different for everybody. Uh, but myself, I don't think there's anything magical about being an artist. Um, I love to be an artist, don't get me wrong. I love uh, to be able to, at times, even though there's a huge struggle of solving design problems and just trying to figure how, how things can work and how you can make it better and all that stuff. Uh, for a client or for your own projects it's more of like a I consider like more of, I guess of a problem solver sort of thing you know like I like to come up with creative solutions um, and I'm very I beat myself up a lot where uh, especially at my day job at work uh, right now we're doing a lot of uh, initial concept design and I feel like I can do better than what I'm producing and it's not as easy as, well, why aren't you just doing it? You know, like, why? <laughs> if you feel like you can do better, how come you're not? Um, it's because uh, I think you guys remember me talking, or actually, no, this is on YouTube. I, I, I did a questions and answers video last week. And it, I was talking about new artists running into walls, running into blocks and stuff. And that, that's basically what happens with me in concept. Like, I can come up with uh, some designs and hopefully they're good. And hopefully my my uh the, the whole team at work likes it um uh, most cases you know it's it's good but it's not great it's getting there um and it's a slow burn and that kind of stuff starts to eat at me a little bit like it starts to oh god i'm failing <laughs> everybody doesn't love my stuff everybody's not saying oh this is great knocked it out of the park and you start to get in a little bit of a panic mode and it's just you know the only thing you can do, really, is more research and just keep going at it. Don't stop. Eventually, you'll kind of get there. I don't know what really that has to do with anything. Oh, I was talking about anything special about being an artist. <laughs> now, to be fair, uh, I guess I'd consider my... It, it's funny. At work, I'm a, I'm, I do concept art, but I also do illustration if I need it, right? Um, for, like, ads or stuff for our video games. So I've got a, a few hats that I have to wear. And being an illustrator, like a comic book artist, like what I'm doing right now is an illustrator, right? I'm making an illustration, which is a cover uh, for a client that's going to use this, I believe it's on the back cover, um, to and basically get sales, get people to pick up the book. That's the hardest part, right? So it needs to be as kick-ass as I can make it. But that is a whole different can of worms than concept design like making something you know this is just okay make a, a cool composition make it look cool a lot of the word cool going on there um, but it's not like if you look at let me just zoom out here okay this demon's pretty generic I didn't design any of these characters okay so I'm just drawing them uh, to me and I'll just be blunt and honest this demon character he's not very interesting he looks like a generic demon but there's nothing really unique about him this this is just a guy with glasses so obviously you know I don't really get much out of that uh, now the angel guy here he's kind of he it's a classic superhero pose and image it, his costume is simple which is great because the more you draw these characters page after page after page you can't be expected necessarily to go in there and just start rendering out all this detail um i don't know if will robson's in the chat or not um but when he took over on the standard i had designed this character that was sort of wearing like an iron man outfit and i went to town on that and i did a big no-no uh, and, and i apologized to will um and he did the the smart thing he simplified it but what the dumb thing was was i designed a character um with the design that the, that John Lee's the writer wanted okay it was like a military outfit um, actually here let me pull it up just so I can so you guys know the same page that I'm on here now, the problem is I, I started doing concept design in the comic book which is you know not ever a good thing if you guys know what I'm talking about maybe you guys work with clients or your or your own projects and what you do is 
in your script you have like okay so fantasy character barbarian warrior guy with sword enters cave and an ogre is there and they fight but you don't design you've you've already designed the main character right because he's the main character or she's the main character and you love him yeah i want to draw a story about that character but then when it comes time to drawing the ogre if you haven't drawn an ogre before or you didn't even design the ogre before you started doing that comic page that means you're going to start doing concept design right on the page and usually i find this happens to me more way more often than it should is that the design is boring it's ugh. and what you end up doing is adding more detail because you haven't figured out the solution to the problem before even doing the comic book page right um which i'll talk more about in that mini comic series sorry i'm just trying to find uh where are we at here uh, comics business Oh, man, where is it? Okay, it's in there. All right, now let's see if I can find... Uh, Ian saying, Jonathan, David Finch actually does all his design work in the interior, so you're not alone. Um, okay, so there's a couple things, just, just to be clear. <laughs> Comic books are a medium that are meant to be, I don't want to say meant, but most cases are, they're just churned out. Every month it's a book, right? And you want the best of everything inside it. That's why you hire uh, professionals and you spend a lot of money on them because you know that you're putting money into their hands, okay? And I'm not going to use David, uh, like Dave Finch as the example here, but let's just use an example of the Fantastic Four. So you have, we'll put... I don't know, Jim Lee, okay, he's drawn the Fantastic Four right now, just just play along, um, so he's drawn the Fantastic Four, it's all good, all the script's fine, and then uh, at the last page you've got uh, the new villain shows up, um, but this villain is a mixture of ooze and water, okay, it's like a, an ooze water beast, now, if you haven't done, and I don't know Jim Lee's track record for this stuff, I'm just using it because he's, it's a title that we guys all know, that we all know. Unless he took some time to concept out that character before heading into that page, he's going to have a rough ass time, and or it's just going to be a generic slime monster beast thing. It's just going to look like I don't know a. a a bear that looks like it's in ooze, which is fine-ish for comics, all right. But when you get start, when you guys start looking into concept art, you can start to see where design gets pushed and things get awesome. There's a reason, and th again, I just want to underline this. From for the most part, this is all my personal opinion on this stuff. Okay, there, there's a, I have a love for concept art because concept art, you can start taking design, pushing it, getting brand new things, getting some awesome looking stuff. Um, for very little work but the problem is when you're doing comic books you don't necessarily have that time to be able to just go i'm gonna spend a day just a full day today designing an ooze bear right like that seems crazy because on the other hand what i can do is i could do a, that full page and get paid my page rate which could be anywhere from one to two hundred dollars right depends who you are it doesn't make sense to just do concept art for free right like th there's a reason for this however if you had like Jim Lee again, for example, and you said that at the end, it's all right. You've got this uh, the new super villains out there, and he's a he's like a cyborg, but he's a he's a bear cyborg, man, right? And he's got I don't know, he can control water. So right away, because he's a superhero, there's there's a language there that you can go. Okay, I can give him some sort of basic design and it'll be okay for the most part it's not gonna be mind-blowing if you look at a lot of superhero comics or superhero characters right like their costumes are they're not very creative they might have creative solutions for color and how a pattern can work on them but they're usually like spandex they're not suits of armor they're not clothing right oh man where is this picture this one should okay here we go finally found it god so you guys aren't staring at like gray on my screen um, okay, so 
And I'm not saying this is a, an awesome design or anything. I'm just trying to show you a big no-no, okay? So when I designed this character, I just designed him on the page. I didn't do that concept stuff. So what I ended up doing was he's just a generic guy with, like, he's got so much stuff going on with him. Can you imagine drawing a, and, and this does happen in the last issue. I'm just going to do a little spoiler with you guys. This, there's a person that ends up wearing this suit fighting a bad guy. Okay, and here's Will. He can tell you. Actually, you guys can chat with him. Um, Will, basically what I'm talking to them, just the way this conversation is going, is about uh, concept design uh, before you jump into a comic book, uh, that sort of thing. And the problem I had done is with this character, I designed him on the page. So there's things that aren't really thought out. There's things just thrown in there, a lot of detail. Now, what Will had to do is he had to redesign this character um, and make it simplified as all hell because... There's pages full of this guy. If you have the time to draw all this stuff out, do it. And if you want to, do it. Right? But that's what I'm talking about. If you can't... It just doesn't make sense to be doing this sort of stuff. If you're working... I want to say with a publishing house or something. And what they're doing is... Pounding this stuff out. If you can draw pages of this kind of detail, do it. Most of us probably can't or don't want to. Sort of thing. Okay? Okay? So I just wanted to put that out there just to just to let you know, okay? Just to just to like put it out there. Um, let me just scroll up here while we get back to the coloring here. I'm just going to talk about what we're doing with the coloring here uh, in a second. I just want to make sure I got the questions. Uh, da, da, da. Okay. <laughs> yep. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Will. Um, I don't know if you could hear me. It's not like uh, some of the audio was a little off for you or maybe took a little while to kick in but I was just telling them uh, the big no-no there in designing something like that to draw page after page uh, and to be fair that was drawn probably almost a year before I had to get to drawing the pages and uh, once it came time for that uh, I, I just didn't have the time to do the page <laughs> um, and unfortunately Will got stuck Finding a creative solution around that so that he could so that he could hit the deadline without having to rip his hair out, ripping his hair out and be bald like I am. So kudos to that. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm just putting a sort of like a mask, but I'm just blocking out colors, okay? And it's sort of like tone. You're gonna see in a second what, what I'm doing here with the tone, and uh, then we're gonna block in the colors but by doing this it's sort of like I can't go out of the shape so this whole city down here will always be locked in here same with the characters above and uh, one of the benefits of working in grayscale is that your tone like your shadows and your lights are much easier to make sense than they are when you just start throwing colors on and they're just throwing a shadow just because okay so let me just show you here so what I want to pop in this image are the characters, right? So I want them to be darker. Not necessarily darker, but I just need to pop, right? So the only bright thing is the city down here. I want a lot of light. You can see the, the especially on the angel dude up at the top here, all of the back of him here is in, pretty much in shadow. And even the light on his face is insinuating that the light is coming down here. Uh, this character here, all of on this side will be in light. This guy's got a little bit more detail going on, but you know the light's gonna be kissing his face sort of thing right in there, okay? So, now in saying that, even though we're not gonna go into color just yet, what I'm going to do is select this layer here, make a new layer, hold Alt, and it confines it to the layer that I have underneath. So, as you can watch, so I can start coloring in his eyebrows. Oh, cool, yeah, he's got like some cool pattern. No matter how wild my brush goes, it'll never go out of that selection. It's a different way of doing a mask. I still don't understand masks in Photoshop, to be honest with you guys. Um, but when you make a layer that's combined inside there, it just makes it so much easier, okay? So what we're gonna do is just tone this out. I'm not worrying about shading or anything. I'm just trying to pick what tones will work here. So I want his skin to just be a little darker than his armor. I'm just gonna pick that and just draw it over top. 
And the next step that we'll be doing after this, once all this gray work's done, it might seem like it's an extra step and it's taking more time and all that stuff. But it's really not. What it's doing is it's allowing me to go, okay, I already know what my tones are going to be. All I need to drop next after is the color. And what I'll do, I'll just show you once this face is done, what that looks like. And then we'll get back to the gray. It doesn't really matter if we go in here. We're just going to be working in layers anyway. So I would have it like this, okay? Now, the next step that I would do is obviously his skin's not gray, right? So what we would do is just open up your color picker. And when you use the eyedropper, do you see where it's at here? It's right here. This is the tone I'm going for. So that essentially means I got the range all in here that I can make that color, right? If I want it to be purely saturated, it can be here. If I want it kind of darkish gray, just so everything kind of melts so that I can start pushing highlights, it's around here, okay? So I would eyedropper that. Oops, sorry. I'll get the color pick up there, eyedropper it, and then kind of pick the tone. You know, just generic Caucasian dude. It's probably around here. I don't want it to be too saturated, so maybe around there is good. And then I can just lock that layer and fill it, right? And you can see right away what it does is it just makes it that color, right? I don't have to worry about, uh, is, is up here the right color that I need to go? Like, ugh, gross, right? But I can maybe go here. It's a little more saturated. You see where we're going here? Um, or I can just go and make it even less saturated if I wanted the colors to kind of look a little bit more gray, okay? So I, I have no idea if you guys understand what I'm talking about or not. Uh, hopefully you guys can kind of understand what we're doing here. Okay, so let's get in there and color and all this stuff. Any part where he's got some flesh. And one trick that I have in Photoshop here, I've showed you guys before, but what the hell, do it again, it's always fun, is making a selection and then selecting inside of it, like outlining the selection, and then selecting inside of that outline that you made, and then you can just fill it that way, that way you don't got to do this, you don't got to color and everything. I used to that all the time, and it kills my, kills my wrist anyway, and it just takes so much bloody time, and it's just like... I don't know. You can be spending that time actually coloring, you know? Getting your work done. I have the I have this set up to a uh, an action key in Photoshop. So here you go. So now that I have it outlined, I can just select it and then that's it, you know? And now it's 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 filled. Um, I'll show you guys exactly what I'm doing with that, so it's not just the hockey. So I'm drawing all in here. I'll turn the line art off so you can really see exactly what's going on. And I usually just crank some music while I'm doing this because there's no thought. I don't need thought in this, right? When you're working with gray tones or even just making selections like this, at least for myself, I don't, you know, need to worry about anything like that. And you're not worrying about gradients or light. Is light hitting it necessarily? None of that stuff, okay? So we just turn the inks off. This is what it looks like underneath okay so you can see I missed some here so just clean it up but this is all it is okay so what we do is you go over here and you click the the magic wand tool you might have uh, the quick selection tool when Photoshop opens as a default I believe if you just click and hold that and go to magic wand that's the good stuff uh, up at the top here you might want to play around with some of this the anti-alias thing I have tolerance 32 it sometimes I just turn it off uh, it doesn't really matter but you what you do is you just select inside there make sure your sample all layers is off so you select inside it, and you go up to here to select, modify, expand. So what we're going to do is expand that selection, just like it says. I go like three pixels like that, and then uh, you can either grab your paint bucket, bucket, paint bucket, or just go Alt Backspace, and then Control D to deselect. So it sounds like a whole bunch of work, uh, but once you get used to Photoshop. It's, it's all pretty easy peasy stuff. And the next thing is, like I say, you map all of those actions I just took to a, a function key, so, like an action. So you can see over here, if you go to action, right here, uh, expand and fill. All I need to do is press F4. So I just, let's just undo that selection, just so you guys can see. So all I need to do is press W or click the wand, click inside of it, and press F4. 
and it does it. It even deselects it. And if I expand it, this is what the action looks like. And I just recorded doing all that, everything you guys just saw. Okay. I highly recommend checking out um, again the DC Comics Guide to Digitally Drawn Comics. Uh, Freddie Williams does talk about it in that, so you guys can definitely check that out. Okay, so I got the tone there. Oh, I forgot his hands. Uh, I see some questions in the, the chat. Just give me one quick second. And I will answer that for you. Actually, here, I'm just going to grab a lasso tool and just make a gross selection all the way around that and fill it. So much shadow in here that it doesn't even matter. So you can see right now what's happening, right? Hopefully. You guys can see how I'm building this stuff up. Uh, this guy's got blonde hair. So let's make another layer here. And I'm going to select that gray tone. And I'm just going to push it up a bit. I'm not going extremes here. I'm just kind of keeping it, keeping it all local. Not really experimenting too, too much with any of this here. And the reason for this is, like I said, he has blonde hair, um, and I want it to be a little lighter. I want it to be a little bit more golden, more magical. And all this stuff can be changed at any time. You're never locked into anything. It's it's digital, guys. Always, always remember that. Please, please remember that. You're never locked into... If you don't like the way something looks, change it. If you're under a tight deadline, I mean, there, there are solutions that you can get around it. Don't, don't beat yourself up over it. You know. Don't go. Uh, well, you know, the color doesn't look that good, or the drawing, the line art's not that good. It's, you know, there's nothing I can do about it. Uh, that's it's kind of crap. Make the the images work for you. Do what the image needs you to do. Okay. Make it work for. Make it work for you, man. Uh, da, 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 da. so do I want his, he's got white eyes, it just kind of like flattens the eye out, I'll leave it for now, we can worry about it later, okay, uh, let me just go back and just double check what you guys are saying now, Lars, uh, he's saying it's kind of like the color video you did with the Red Ranger. I, I honestly, I've been jumping around with color, pro process of coloring so much. Uh, I'm not sure. I, if, if it's right to what you were saying, it, it's, it was a little different. I was coloring or painting somewhat in a grayscale. But the problem with the Red Ranger video was something that I, I didn't understand just right. Like, I, sorry, I didn't understand correctly 100%. What it was, was that it was... I was going way too bright on things, okay? So if you go way too bright on things, uh, you start to lose the value. You start losing the whole the point. Um, and I was way too light and way too dark, so there was no mid-tone. Like you just saw, let me just pop this up so you guys can see the actual range that I'm working in here, okay? So this is the default gray. Hopefully you can see it on the left here. Just keep an eye on there. I don't know how well it's zoomed in. So that's the default gray that he is. I go darker. And then I even go lighter. Like it's it's all around the same. It's not moving around. It's not way up here and way down here. When you start doing that, your colors start getting real fucky. Um, okay, so he's also got some jeans. Guy likes to wear jeans. It's a cool angel. So again, I'm not going to be jumping around too much. I'm just going to eyedropper that darker color. And we're going to select his pants those guys out because uh, like if you guys remember what I said I want his oops I want his armor to be the brightest thing on him his face has to have the most detail that's where I want the viewer to look uh, so that's where all the shading and the rendering and the coloring and the highlighting and all that garbage is gonna go in um, but I want his armor to still pop off of him, right? Now, let me just pull up the reference for this character so you guys can see what I'm working with here. Um, that might make it a little easier for you guys to understand what's going on. Um, okay, I don't know which one of these is, is right, so I'm just going to open one of them and hope it's... Yeah, this doesn't do anybody any favors. 
Uh, file open. Open. Angel. Okay, so the reference I was given, sometimes you're, you're stuck with this sort of stuff. Um, I believe, it's my understanding anyway, that the coloring was going on while I was still doing the first cover. So, I mean, the interior coloring was still being done, okay? Uh, let's just crop to this. I don't need the rest of it. So if you can see him, it's going to be real pixelated, but you know, his in this image anyway, his flesh is brighter than his armor. I don't like the way that looks myself. I don't his wings are going to be pretty bright as is. I don't want that contrasting with his skin. Uh so if it's just so you guys can see what I'm talking about, if you look at his skin color, it's here and there's the wings okay just look right here where it's sliding up right here for the the tone or what is this the v value this is value hue the hue jesus all these fancy fancy art words but it's very close it's, it's very close i i don't like that that's it's not the way i want it to look so just to contrast it let me open uh color so this is the finished color of the original cover, right? If you guys remember this one at all, right? So you can kind of see, I don't even remember how the workflow went for this. It's going to be different, I'm sure, on what we're doing here. But like even this demon guy, there's so much bounce light going on. Like obviously the attention I wanted to the face there, right? But um, this is actually a wrong version. But you can see here, I still sort of went with the, the lighter color but his face his skin color is more tanned it's more darker right because i don't want these wings blending i want them to pop i want those wings to be separate i don't want them to be the same you know what i'm saying 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 okay so here's one thing just to notice you see how he's got that trim that that lighter gold trim on his armor uh we're going to be doing that as well okay so let's close that up And I secretly still like this cover better than <laughs> better than that one. That's okay. So let's pick again. Um, where are we? Make a new layer. We're gonna pick just that lighter color we have. We're not pushing things too far. Is that really okay? So actually, look. Okay, so this is the lighter gray, guys. Do you notice how different it is as opposed to when I draw it on there? Like, when this color's drawn in that dark, look how m much that pops. Like, that looks like he's got gigantic bright eyebrows, right? But when it's done on the normal gray, it's just like, it's very subtle. It's interesting the way the human eye works. Alright, so I'm starting to do that thing I told you guys that I don't like to do. I'm, I'm actually coloring this whole thing. <laughs> so let's stop that. And we're just going to outline it. And if my math is right, it looks like we've got about 15 minutes left. Yeah, about 15, 20 minutes left of the show, so... It's the critique part of the show. So if you guys had any uh, anything that you guys wanted me to critique, by all means, plop it into the chat. Please put it in all capitals so I can see. Um, and please say critique me. Uh, please critique this, something like that, so I can definitely see it. And if you guys wanted a separate critique or a private critique or anything like that, head on over to my Patreon account. That's patreon.com slash Jonathan Rector. Okay, guys? So there we go, we got that, now we're going to select it, boom. Just makes it so much easier. Let's headache with this stuff. And I just want to reiterate one more time because I just want to make sure it sinks in with you guys. If you guys are interested in coloring. And this is at least just something I'm, I've come across with where I'm at right now with mine. This stage with the grayscaling for me came from concept art okay 
the whole point of this is it's it is faster to do this and then add color on top of it and you will get a better result as opposed to thinking about okay well what color should I use here like how bright should his skin be and then pick that tone and then start building that way now everybody works differently everybody's got different workflows what I what I want to highlight is please 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 take the time to try this with one of your own images like I say this this if you think of doing an entire comic book page like this and that's too much time I'm I might be with you on that a little bit because that is quite a bit of specifics to kind of get into right um, but this is definitely tackling something of a illustration kind of mindset as well pretty sure I'm going to use this exact same uh, color here, this tone, uh, for his wings. It might go a little brighter, we'll see. Okay, looks like we got a critique here, so I'm just going to finish this glove, and we'll jump into it for you. And while we're waiting here, before I get into the critique, uh, so I can say it now so I don't have to say it at the very end, for those of you that came a little bit later in tonight's show, uh, just little feedback for you, a little, little reminder just so you guys can see what's going on. I'll be making a YouTube video just discussing this in case it gets a little confusing. Um, but I'm going to be releasing a schedule uh, for YouTube content. Okay, So every Monday we're going to be releasing a video that's similar to what's already on the channel of me working on client work and just narrating over top of it and you know kind of discussing what I'm doing, uh, some of the settings, stuff that if you've checked my channel out within the last year at least um, that's the normal stuff going on there okay so that's gonna be every Monday uh, every Wednesday of course is the live stream uh, which will be uploaded to YouTube on the weekend the following weekend okay so this show here will be this weekend uh, in case you miss it uh, every Thursday is we're gonna get back to the basics like sort of the, the start of this channel what we're gonna be doing is tutorials, fundamentals, stuff mostly for uh, beginners and basic users and stuff like that. Uh, book recommendations, um, art tools, maybe stuff that we're, that I'm finding throughout the week or articles and stuff like that. Just stuff that will help people. Um, mostly, I, I, if you're an advanced artist, or I don't want to say an advanced artist, it sounds stupid, but you guys will see what I'm talking about, like things that are under 10 minutes of just, you know, how to draw certain things or um, things that I think might help you to get better, quicker, that kind of stuff. Um, that way we can start getting more videos out to you guys and you guys can start to expect a certain schedule so that, you know, for those of you that are looking for this sort of stuff, you can expect it, you know, and it'll, it'll be there for you. And hopefully you guys get some enjoyment out of it. Hopefully it helps you out. Alright, so let's cut these wings here. How 
Ready, Zachary? Yeah, it's still fine. I just want to show one last thing, and then I promise I'll get to the critique there, okay? So if you look at the wings, they might look like they're pretty, like, ugh, I just flattened it out, right? But remember, there's no color there, right? So if we start going to, like, just for the sake of it here, uh, beige kind of color, and we still get it, you know, tanned, it's still dark, you know? Like, it's still got some darkness to it. We can still even kind of punch it down a bit. They're kind of like bluish, bluish green wings. They look kind of cool. You know, like there's still range that you can get out of there. So it's just an optical illusion with your eyes. And that's the whole point of art, right? It's because of this background. Like as soon as I, I make the background pure white, they still pop, you know? Um, and if we made the background even darker, right? Like they really start to pop now. So anyway, let's save it. Let's get to the critique here. Uh, okay, so Ian will be our critique of the night here. And he is saying, um, Jonathan, this is a work in progress. I'm inter interested in what you'd like to see content-wise. I already know that I have to adjust the hell out of the contrast. That's later, though. Uh, content and design. Thoughts, please. Okay. So let me just copy the link. The linky-poo. And... Peace and go. Uh, copy image. I'll just bring it down. Okay, so uh, what Ian's saying, like he knows, you need to really pump or punch that uh, um, the contrast. Okay, because it is like like this. I, I'm not going to criticize anybody that's doing digital painting on how they do it. Personally, I I wouldn't do this just because. Let me show you here. Image adjustment levels. Right. Look at this. For those of you that don't understand the levels, uh, the very basic understanding is essentially you don't want a cluster like this. The, that means the range is so small, right? So if we just bring it in even slightly, it just starts getting better, you know, right? Like we don't need it a nighttime scene like this necessarily. You know, now it looks like night, right? But if it was how it originally looked, kind of like snow maybe. You can bring in the middle range and just start playing with this up. This is very important. What I'm going to do, I know you, I know you said you didn't want to worry about that just yet. I'm going to do it just so that it's easier for people to see, okay? Um, okay, so let's take a look. Okay, so it looks like what's happening here, we got some really cool... Uh, design going on here. Uh, there is one problem here, is that you've uh, flattened out, uh, let me just get a red here, you flattened this out right here, okay? That right there uh, should really start contouring to his leg. Uh, so we have this character, he's leaning forward here, right? Um, and it looks like there's a big beast kind of coming at him. So I would assume the rest of them would be kind of going in the distance as well. You know, kind of going... He's probably standing his ground a bit. So his legs are probably a little little tighter. Probably got like a leg this way, I would assume. Just kind of like... So he's standing his ground. He's not quite turned directly at the guy. But he's not. But he can run away too. You know that sort of thing. Okay, um, that's what I would change. But we'll just assume that you're not repainting the whole thing. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to actually paint this how I would do it. I just want to make sure I got the right brush here. Um, I thought I had this saved. One second here, guys. Uh, window brush. We don't want the shape dynamics on. We want pen pressure and no spacing. Okay. So I'm just going to show you here. 
Let's just get those shadows back in. So based on what you have here, I'm going to really push this leg into the background, you know, just to make it look like his his leg is going into the into the distance. Just bring some highlights. I'm just trying to find a, a hotter color you got here. Okay, so now that we kind of have where the leg's going, you had uh, his weapon like that. Um, I would curve it just to help show that it's going into the distance, you know? Like it's kind of still going behind him. Just want to get some other colors here that you had. Okay, like there's some other stuff here going on, like this leg should probably be pushed back too. There's some like dust or something in between them. Uh... And just trying to push the leg back a bit here. It's still not looking like it's it's folding back there. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. What else would I do here? Um. Okay. So I'm assuming he's going to be the point of interest here, right? So I would really myself anyway be putting most of the shadows even if they're simple shadows up in the face and the highlights up in the face as well. I know you've still got quite a bit left to go on this, but the reason I'm saying this is because that's the, the focal point of the image. Unless it's him going again, even though the, that big guy's there, he needs to still uh, pop over it, right? And I, I, I personally, this is just a personal thing on this one. I don't like his pose just like he's standing there. Maybe he's standing his ground, I'm not quite sure. But I would probably, you know, sink in that chest. Try to make it look like he's leaning forward, if you can. Just gonna push those arms in the back again. I just need to get a little brighter here. There we go. Let me get a little detail of that helmet. Like I said, I know you still got a, a bunch of stuff to do here, so probably all this stuff here doesn't matter because you probably got I'm assuming you have that in your mind anyway that you'll be doing that all right just so that your eye kind of focuses on there right uh, okay and the last thing here that I'll just talk about is if you want to show like the scale of this beast that's in front of him, right? Because I'm assuming he's got quite a bit of... He's pretty beasty. 
I'm just going to make a selection here around him. And he looks really good too, man. He looks really, uh, anatomy looks clean. It's, it's understandable what he is, you know. But I would start to really put some atmosphere in between there. So I'm just going to pick a bright color here. And make since I have the selection of him, I'm just going to invert that selection. Let's make a new layer here. And just kind of airbrush it in front here. And what this does is just putting distance in front of these two characters, right? And maybe we can start pulling in some other colors here, like green maybe. Okay, so now we got that. Um, you've got a lot of detail going on here, so I probably wouldn't go too too much into here, but maybe put like I don't know some 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 interesting stuff here. Maybe like some tribal tattoos or something on them. And what that'll help do too is it'll help like render out his form like where everything's kind of going just subtle stuff we don't gotta we don't have to do that much and and then the very last thing I would say please just do like a, a bounce light <laughs> a reflective light I know a lot of people add that sort of stuff um, and you don't necessarily need it also just wanted to point out, uh, if you haven't flipped it, I think this version, if it's flipped, looks better. Um, only because you've got this big intimidating thing going down to the main character. Uh, this works. I just feel like this one has a little bit more weight to it, personally. I'm just going to actually block out a lot of his back here. Um, okay, so that, that bounce light, and then I'll and I'll wrap this up. I don't want to uh, go too crazy here. Um, actually, the first thing we'll do, just real quick, is just going to bring a colder, colder highlight, just so you can see what I was talking about about getting the attention on his face. I like that he's got a smile, or look like he had a smile, so he's probably ready for this. Maybe he's got like a trap set up for this guy. Um, what I'm what I'm also doing too, you you know, I'm not just saying it just to talk to you guys. So I've got something to say. <laughs> I am what I'm doing here is stuff that I will ask myself while I'm doing this sort of stuff at like at work or or on my own stuff, right? Is that it's just ask questions um, to yourself, like what's the story you're telling here, right? It's not just a dude in the winterlands and some. Harry Ogre just showed up, right? If that is, well, you know, well, why? Why did he show up? Why is this guy? Is is he coming to this like this man's house? Is he coming to like mess shit up? Is this is the man hunting that dude? What's he doing? What are they doing out here? This guy's got no shirt on. I got the idea that it's cold here. Is it cold? I don't know. He's smiling, you know. He's smiling up to no good. He's got some trickery. So I'm just going to use this dark here just to, whoops, I don't know what the hell's going on. Really push, pushing those abs. Okay. And then the last thing here we'll do is we're, I'm just going to do that uh, that bounce light. So what, let, let's think here. Okay, so what could he be here? You got like this big, this hairy guy, just crazy. He's coming down to get him. Um, got a lot of blues and greens going on. Red would work. Uh, I don't gotta don't gotta go that high with it. Maybe he's like uh, I don't know. So purple might work. And this guy in the foreground here is where I would put, well, you don't want to draw too, too much attention. Uh, let's try to figure it out. Maybe there's a, like a 
magic fire pit or something beside them. Just trying to round out with the highlights too, right? Nothing, nothing too, too drastic. And then on this guy, that's where I'd probably put most of the the highlights because I want I want this guy to be the focus. And then you can go in there and make like some intricate patterns and stuff on this. Just a little bit back here too. Just on that stuff that we already put back there. Oh, his knife. It's a dangerous dude. Yeah. Just zoom out there. And so that, I mean that would probably be it. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do uh, before and after. Um, but hue saturation. Let me just see what the different highlights look like. I really don't want warmth in there. I just want to keep it cold. Yeah, probably just still go with blue. So change it to blue. Um, and again, one last time, what I will do here is so take a look at the levels here. I just want to punch in those the dark areas and like just separate some of that tone. Um, and then the last thing is that color balance I told you guys about. It's very important. Um, it just starts marrying a lot of the colors together, right? So the shadows I want to go into like a, a purple. And the highlights, I want them to go into the blue. And I'm just going to make a hue saturation. Just pull back the saturation a bit because I still want to keep it similar to what you had. So I'm just going to um, merge all that together here. And then we're going to flip it and we're going to do a before and after here. Okay, so uh, here's the original. Oops, let me just pull that over here. Shit. <laughs> Come on. Uh, comics. Comics 2. My apologies. I have no idea how to use Photoshop. Okay. <laughs> there we go took a little bit um yeah you could probably even put like some some like uh what's it called um snow or something in between them okay so here's the original everything's fine uh, i would fix the leg if you, if you were only to fix something in this whole image it would be this this leg it's very flat it looks very rendered so i'm assuming you're starting there going up uh and then here's the paint over here Okay, original, paint over, okay, so all I'm trying to do there is just push things around, um, okay, I know you're saying that you don't really know Photoshop that well, that, that's, that's fine. Um, most of this stuff here is, from what I understand anyway, from the people that I'm learning my stuff from anyway, is this is like a painting thing, not a Photoshop problem, where it's, if if you could dr or <laughs> do an awesome picture with like, let's say colored pencils or painting on canvas, you should still be able to paint in Photoshop. Now, to be fair, there's a lot of things in Photoshop that you don't know about, um, but if you could just get a canvas, pick a brush and paint, you should be able to do that in Photoshop, right? So it's just keep working, keep doing what you're doing. A lot of the stuff is there. Um, you know, it's it's all really good stuff. It all looks really good. Um, I just added a little bit more atmosphere in between these two characters so that you can tell that there's like a depth to them, like there's, there's space between them. Here it's kind of flat. What you did here is 
you darkened the character, this beast on the right, and you lightened the character on the left, which is great because it shows that they're not in the same plane. Um, however, if you just add, you know, just a little bit of airbrush in between them, you can really start pushing it, you know? Hey, no problem, buddy. No problem. Ho hopefully it helped you out. Uh, I just want to do one final thing. <laughs> There's always one final thing to do, right? So I'm making a selection around this guy again. And what we're going to do is uh, I just want to show you by putting uh, even more, not necessarily atmosphere, but atmospheric detail. In this case, we're going to do um, some snow. And for the snow, I'm not going to make necessarily a, a white. Just making little like hashes. Then we're gonna we're gonna blur it. But the idea here is to kind of get that some of that detail in between them. So you can see like what I'm doing here is I have shapes in front of the character here. But this guy, he's got nothing, nothing on him. Okay. Um, where's my color picker? Yeah, is this a snow scene or am I just making this up? <laughs> I, I have a feeling like I'm just making this up. Um, because I can show you guys again. Uh, still, before you keep painting, I would just recommend you to please just... Uh, you are going to suggest a snow... Okay, sweet. Okay, so I'm not that far off. Which is good because that means at least the information that you had um, was still being read. At least I, I read it too, right? So, you know, good stuff there. Um... But just go ahead and darken your image up, and then you can start playing with the values and the range there. Because right now it's it's very uh, difficult to do so. Okay, so we have that. Um, let me just get Photoshop back on the screen here, just so I can show you guys what the hell's going on. So I'm gonna duplicate that layer, shut the last one off, go filter, blur. Uh, motion blur. Yeah, we'll just put the angle again. The angle that I want the the snow blowing is going directly at the guy that I want you to look at, right? I want you to look at this guy. Like that. I'll probably put that other layer back on top of it. We can just go filter blur, just just a Gaussian blur, nothing crazy. Right, and some of this I, we can put on top of the creature here just so you can show them. It's that sort of thing here. I'm just going to lighten it up just a tad. Okay. So there you go. I just put a little bit of snow in there just to help, again, push that this stuff's going on there. <laughs> Yeah, DeviantArt isn't very fun. Uh, da, 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 da. Right, and like this is some of the cool stuff, right? What's that jar looked very icy and cool to begin with, hence snow. Yeah, absolutely. I was trying to learn how to work from the most limited palette, which is part, which is why it's so blue green, but it's supposed to be snow. No, no, you were um. I don't want to make it sound like you, like the limited palette that you had here. Sorry, let me just this this isn't even what you started with. I had already adjusted the levels. This is what you had, right? I just want to make sure everybody can see um, wh where I'm coming from with this or why I'm doing what I'm doing here, whether it's right or wrong. So this is the original one you had because you want it to be a light snowy scene. You what I would assume is you just want it so that it's not clear because it's just snow blowing everywhere, right? And all I did was darken it, which, you know, leads it to seem like it's, okay, now it's lost that snowy blizzard feeling, right? Um, and then once you start adding some details, you can bring that snow back in. But even with what you had, if you were to just go, um, 
image adjust. Uh, do we want to go levels with that? Uh, maybe brightness contrast. Let me just see if we bring up the contrast. You could fiddle around with the contrast a bit. And image adjust levels again. I keep going to the levels. I just want to darken it and maybe we can even just make it a little whiter. Right, so here's like the original one you had. Um, and it's still, all I did was darken it and lighten it at the same time. It's still white, it's clear. The only the only problem here is with the pal that you have, in my opinion anyway, is when you click around, like it's it's not moving, right? Like it's all staying here, which which is what I understand you're trying to say with your limited palette. Um, but I mean, if it's an experiment, right? Absolutely. Are you afraid to uh, push it because you're afraid to ruin it? I, I yeah, I, I, I hear you. Um, one trick that I found out a little while ago to do this, try this, Ian. It'll probably, hopefully it'll work for you, okay? So let's say you had, uh, like, I don't know, that many layers on your picture, and you're like, oops, I don't, I, you know, I don't know if, I'm, if I want to push certain things, right? There's these beautiful things down here, uh, right here. It looks like a black and white cookie, okay? Just click that. Yeah, somebody has a, Maddie has an amazing, or an amazing, but a great example. Just save another version and then just keep working on that one. Um, but if you click on this black and white cookie thing, there's a whole bunch of things in here, right? So let's go get to that levels. And I'm just going to move the levels. We're going to make it gross. Now it's nighttime. It's Game of Thrones, okay? What that black and white cookie does is it makes a layer that actually has that on. So I can just turn that on and off, right? I can just turn that on and off. I don't like where it's going. As long as I'm painting on top of those things, it's okay. But let's just say... I love the way this is going, but I, I still don't know if I should push it. I don't know if I can. This is one awesome thing I learned in Photoshop. Highly recommend everybody uses it, especially if you're coloring this sort of stuff. Okay, so if you go up to the top, go select all. It's going to have a selection around your entire image. Okay, go to edit, copy merged. What copy merge does is it makes a copy of exactly what you see, layers included. Okay, so click that and make a new layer and then just go edit paste okay so if I were to turn that layer that I just made off and I'm going into the old stuff and I'm just like ah, you know I don't know if I, I like that kind of thing it doesn't matter if I turn all these layers off that copy merged will always save exactly what was shown okay so with just that one layer if I wanted to, now I could just make a new layer on that and start painting it. Or, you know, just a very quick example. We're, we'll do like your traditional orangish stuff. What's the tone we got here? Uh, we don't want to go that saturated. Right? So we're like, yeah, okay, we're going to make them. Oh, did I lose my brush? Yeah, I lost my brush. Yeah, I want this fire behind them. Yeah, it's going to be great. It's awesome. Everybody loves orange and blue. Just works. Yeah, that's great stuff. You like it, and you're just like, ah, you know, I don't really like it. You know, you've still got that layer that you've made underneath it there. No, no, hey, okay, I'm just gonna let it go. <laughs> I'm just gonna walk away because, yeah, we're gonna noodle over this, and that's digital painting is very fun. Uh, coloring is fun, drawing is fun, and it, you can get yourself lost in it. But hopefully, you had a, I, you got something out of it. There's lots of tips in the chat that I was seeing that people were giving, all great stuff. So I just want to say thank you guys once again. Check out my Patreon if you guys wouldn't mind. Um, maybe there's something on there you like, or if you just like the stuff I'm doing, just. Uh, uh, a dollar or whatever says thanks really appreciate that all the money going in there goes directly back into making all the content for you guys and just funneling all that stuff so we can get brand new stuff out to you guys all the time um but yeah thank you guys once again i'll see you next wednesday until then keep reading comics keep making comics i'll see you then bye
Hey guys, just real quick, I just want to let you guys know, you can find me at patreon.com forward slash Jonathan Rector. All your financial support there goes directly back into making more content for you guys and you ladies out there. And remember, you can always cancel your subscription at any time. And if you are one of my Patreons, thank you so much. Your help gets me closer to making my personal comics and my dreams. <laughs> my dreams come to life seriously though head on over there if you guys are interested and um anybody that gives any money at all if it's it is something that you're interested in uh you do get access to my pencil brushes that i use in manga studio 5e extra free and there's five of those guys so subscribe today if you're interested in it share if you're not maybe one of your friends might be interested in it i appreciate all of it thank you again and uh enjoy the video bye